Hello, welcome pen friends. Uh, my name is Chris and I'm back with another pen uh, video. In fact, this time it's going to be kind of a combination. It's going to be a little review on a pen and uh, it's part of what I spent my pen allowance on too. So, and then I'm going to talk about some stuff I'm making, but uh, we're going to talk about the Moon Man pen today. I'm just so excited about this and I know other people have reviewed it and I, I considered not, you know, putting my review out there, but then I thought, why not? We all have a little bit of a different perspective. And I'm just having so much fun with this. Um, I can't just sit here and assume that everybody knows all about it. And there may be people that, that don't. And I find this such a fun pen. So um, I got it on eBay. And this is the clear one right down here. Um, this is the cap and the uh, the um, body or the the barrel and then the uh the section with the nib and the little uh insert here but uh first i just i i can't help it i got to do this um i those of you who follow me on instagram well you've been seeing my posts and everything but uh this is a an altoids tin and uh it measures 85 millimeters by 60 millimeters so it's it's very small I you know I really don't know if it's in my hand okay and then if you're doing inches it's three and a half inches by two and a quarter and I want to show you what fits in here <laughs> it is so cool so here's a moon man pen in in that green color and then here's a a, a standard um, ink sample bottle with my uh, Diamine uh, Aqua Lagoon which is what I chose for now to put in, in my pen. And this is a standard uh, ink uh, syringe from Goulet Pens and then this is a little tube of silicone grease I hadn't started using yet from, uh, from a Twisby pen. And this, there are two ink cartridges that fit the Moon Man that fit in here and this is a um, well, a, a grabber so that you can, I'll, I'll explain, you, you actually kind of need that to twist this nib unit away from the uh, the holder section. So it's, it's very important, or this or something like it. So all of this fits with absolutely no problem, you know, closing it, and it's just amazing. I mean, <laughs> you know, I travel, so I'm thinking about how fun this will be to have everything in here except for my paper and maybe a piece of paper towel, but that's no sweat. I mean, I just, I love it. I just love it. Actually, I might even decorate one of these to be a little different, but I had to do that. I'm sorry, I had to show you. So I'm going to have to stick to my notes because it'll help me here. Um, so that, that all fits in there. And uh, I wanted to share this, where I got mine. I got it on eBay from this seller here, uh, Nylion. Um, who was very, very good to work with. I got the two. So one of them was $13.77 and the other one was slightly more. I'm, I'm, I don't have that paper right in front of me. But it arrived in exactly two weeks with excellent packaging. He had really good communication about how it would take a long time because he was in a remote area. But I thought two weeks from, from a, such a remote area in China was really good. I, I, not bad at all. So I've got a lot of... Uh, pros and cons listed. Uh, first of all, the, the pens are beautiful. Both of them. The, the clear one is just gorgeous. I love a demonstrator, but they're both demonstrators. And this is gorgeous too. And green is not my top color, but I just knew that it was so beautiful. And I do, I do feel like the Aqua, Diamine Aqua Lagoon is a good compromise for me because it's an ink I love, and of course it's not really green at all, but it, it, it still looks really nice in the pen. And I will keep on, you know, going through ink samples and searching and, you know, seeing whether I find something green. But it doesn't have to match. <laughs> I'm just kind of, I'm a little bit, you know, that way about matching. But um, also, well, I really need to play with the one that's all put together. So let, let me get this one out. It does take a few minutes to get things just right to get it all fit in here, but um, let me take it out and we can just, uh, since this one's all put together, um, it's beautiful. It's got a large, easy grip. It's got a 
postable cap that screws on which gives you a nice secure posting but it's just really comfortable it's um i'm going to compare it in a, in a little bit to my other three pocket pens but it's it's more of a grip section it's it's actually a lot more like the petite one if you want you know in terms of uh how much uh you get to hang on to and I just I don't measure those kinds of things I I did some length measurements that I'll give you but it's just really comfortable and I would think even a person with a larger hand would feel like it was comfortable now I'll, I'll get those measurements in a minute but um, it's got a really high quality nib that comes on it in my opinion and I'm still you know I'm a year into this a little bit more than a year so I'm no expert but what I judge it by is that I picked it up, started writing with it, and I still haven't gotten out the micro mesh. So to me, that means we got good stuff in this nib. And for a pen that was under $14, this one was, the other one was closer to 15 I suppose. It was some little discount that I got. But anyway, um, it also has a really large ink capacity. Now, I got all excited when I was first going to ink this up, and I almost put the ink in the wrong side, but I really think I got at least three milliliters. Um, it's too bad because I, I got so excited I didn't slow down and measure, and you know. But I, I can definitely say that a two millimeter, a two milliliter sample wasn't going to cut it. I needed to get, you know, something I had a bottle of even. So it's got that large capacity. It's affordable. Um, and it comes with six ink cartridges. So if you're a newbie or you don't want to do the eyedroppering of this pen, you can start right away by just popping in a cartridge. Now, I think that's cool because, uh, you know, and one of the reasons I think that's so cool is it comes in a nice box. So it could be a gift and it doesn't have to be someone who is a fountain pen expert that you might give it to. So, I mean, this is not a fancy box, but it protects the pen really well. It comes with two of these little, in case you don't have a syringe or eyedropper, it comes with two little pipettes, I guess they're called. The ink is down in the bottom and, you know, it's really packed to protect the pen. So, but yeah, I can imagine that would wrap well and, and give as a nice gift. So that's, that's something to think about, you know. <coughs> okay, uh, to be fair, I have to say there are a couple little things you know that I could list as cons it's kind of a stretch but it is small and I can say that little things can get lost so that's something that concerns me like I've got to take really good care of this because it's really small and, and it could get lost so then the other thing is which it wouldn't affect everybody but it intimidated me at first because um, there there's you know, I, I watched my favorite pen reviewers review of this pen three times <coughs> and paid attention, but I was sort of still a little bit weirded out by all the threading, you know, threading here, 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 and here. <laughs> but I just needed to slow down and get get this all apart, really look at it good, and then I realized it's it's nothing. It's really simple. You just have to do some greasing around here right here all the way around <clears throat> okay and it's got that little nice gasket or whatever you call it uh, o-ring and then and and here too um, at least that's what I think it, that's what I gathered from from watching his review and really and of course then it just um, well that's where this thing comes in hand because I really want to be really careful about screwing that back in there so and getting it out too so you you kind of want to handle it sort of from the sides and <clears throat> so at first so that could be a con for someone unless you're not going to eyedropper if you're just going to um use your uh, cartridges and it goes but yeah <laughs> i you know like i said at first it threw me off once i get it all apart and i was like oh my okay so yeah, it goes together really easily. Now I'm now I'm starting to feel just fine about it. It's just you don't do this stuff in a rush, not with a pen with that many parts. You know, and, and you guys, some of some of you will laugh at me. <clears throat> the other thing that could be considered a con might be storage. So, you know, like where am I gonna keep it? Which pen case? Well, that works out really well for me in this pen case because it just slides right in there and I know it's not going to fall out of here. I've got the Mont Blanc and the Lamy and, and that. It's sort of my pens of the week. So that, you know, that's not a big deal. Um, but like in the Sinclair, it will fall down. It won't stay up where I can reach it. And so that's just something to think about. Um, 
but not it's not going to deter me i am so pleased that i decided to get one of each i really love an all clear demonstrator y'all know that have seen my videos i really love them and i think that it's just gorgeous it's i don't know um let me see if i can hold them up so that you can see them real good they're they're beautiful pens and they seem really well made and all i had to hear was the high rating that my fellow youtuber that i i trust and and respect his opinions you know, once he gave it that higher rating. Now, I will say that I was sort of had myself on a almost a no buy. So I made myself really think about it. I didn't just order while I was watching this video, which is something I've done in the past. Um, I, I thought, is this just me, you know, a shiny object syndrome? Um, or is this really a pen for me? And so I waited several weeks. In fact, I got worried there. I thought, they made, you know, I saw everybody on Instagram was buying them and I thought, well, you know, I think I better do this because it's not going away and it will go away if I want something and then, you know, it just kind of wears off. Okay, so I'm talking too much here. So, um, so I, I showed, I guess, how it comes apart, the cap and the barrel and then, you know, this part um, goes right into the other part. I kind of showed that better than I could with the drawing. So, um, capped, it's 87 millimeters, approximately. I, I was using my little clear ruler in my eyeball, so I don't have a gauge or anything like that yet. Um, and that would be, for those who are doing inches, 3 and 7 sixteenths. Almost 3 and a half, yeah. So, posted, it's uh, 121 millimeters or 4 uh, and 3 quarter inches. And then, unposted, uh, 80. Yeah, 83 millimeters. That kind of threw me off at first, but, <coughs> or three and a quarter. So, so yeah, so that's the Moon Man pen, and I just really, really love it. It writes well. I wrote everything that I wrote in this, this color uh, was written with, with that pen. I find it smooth. I find it uh, a little bit uh, thicker than what I would think of a fine. It has a fine nib, or it says fine on it. But it is, it's nice, it's almost a medium in what I, you know, standardly, <coughs> excuse me, think of. Um, so it, it just writes beautifully. I've been writing in my other journals, my cheaper books and everything. I really haven't had a lot of bleed through with this ink. <coughs> it probably says more about the ink. So um, let's just see if I can figure out how to compare these. Um, get them all kind of over here. Um, my other... Oh, I don't know how much you'll be able to see. So let's see. We're just going to move some things. Um, my other favorite pocket pens are, are these three. And this is the Pilot Petite one. And I use it all the time. And it's got a relatively thicker section. So let's go ahead and get them all kind of put there so we can look. Yeah, it's very compatible with that. But it's still shorter. And then this is the my Caveco uh, Ice Sport. And that section's a little thinner, but it's still comfortable to write with. And it's still shorter than that, but not by much. We're talking about just a little bit over here. And then this is a new-to-me pen, the, the Waterman 52 um, uh, Pocket. And that's very close. Let's see. Very close, but still kind of more like the Caveco. It's it's just, it is the shortest of the pens, but it's got a nice, nice grip, a nice section to hold on to. I like it. Um, my hands are medium, I'd say. I, may, I wear a medium glove, so. <coughs> so that's just a little comparison, and then we'll get them all back. They're posted. Finally, I droppered this Caveco. I don't know. I guess they thought I was going to have a leak because I had had one bad experience, but I got over that. I said, oh, I'm so sick of filling this pen. So, yeah, there we have it. It is it is short. It is small, but it's it's mighty. And it all fits in here. <laughs> so I just think that's really cool. Okay, I'm going to have to move the pens aside and talk about a couple things, other things, or I'm going to run out of time here. So let's move this aside. Um... I have continued on my sewing and other projects this week, and I just wanted to talk about that stuff for a minute, because you, you know you guys are my pen club, right? <laughs> um, I made another little uh, pocket size uh, 
traveler's notebook with some material that I found and I put in two of the UB uh, notebooks and I'm getting a little bit better with the uh, eyelets although I'm looking for some smaller ones uh, they're going in well now and they're you know it's really cool <coughs> and then um, I had just an amazing generous pen friend send me a goodie box and I don't want to say his name because I'm not really sure whether he'd like that but one of the items was a a real leather traveler's notebook it's it's an actual traveler's notebook and it's in the passport size and it's beautiful and this is just one of the things and the other thing which caused me to have to go to the store today <laughs> is that also the person sent me a whole bunch of ink samples to try so I had this one for my full bottles, so I had all of those there. So I went and bought two more because I didn't really want to commit to another tray. Um, I'm kind of like wanting to test and choose, and I'll do the same thing, kind of pass on whatever I don't <coughs> use. And, oh yeah, and I this is something I found in the thrift store a while ago, but this is going to be for my for the ink flight uh, samples that are going to be coming this week. I For the foreseeable future, at least, I'm going to stay on their... Um, getting their box. I really like it. And it's fun. So, whoops. <laughs> I'm trying to do six things. Anyway, um, so that has been so much fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know who you are. And uh, I just, it's incredibly generous and and I appreciate it so much. Well, that led me to the next thing, which I think I was already trying to work on before, before I got the goodie box. But I'm making these little inserts that are... Uh, passport size and uh, I'm going to link the person who I watched her videos and I learned because I had all of a sudden I became interested in doing this lots of people have talked to me lots of viewers and pen pals have talked to me about making some and I just um I, I just thought it was going to be too hard or something I guess anyway I will link the person who I watched her videos I think it's Lollapalooza or something like that and she has this project to make these and she made it look so simple that I thought that it just can't go wrong. This was scrapbook paper, mod podged, you know, and uh, cut to five by seven and then rounded corners and everything. And this was an old notebook, the, uh, the grid paper, the graph paper you see here. It was an old notebook. My husband had used to stamp the dates on his notebooks, and it was 1983. And uh, I asked him, could I use this paper a long time ago? And he said, sure. He was about to recycle it. He just didn't use it. And and so I, I cut and trimmed that, and then I just ran this through my sewing machine. And it just, it's cool, and it'll fit right in. And I didn't, you know, like, it was like, oh, my gosh. It was like I didn't know that I'd be getting one. I, I just had it on my wish list, you know. <clears throat> this is the first one I made. It was out of a, a greeting card that uh, I'd used. I used almost all of them, and then I thought my mom would probably get sick of having the same one. And this paper that I put in this one is uh, uh, Office Depot uh, laser paper that another viewer recommended that I could print um, stationery on from free templates online. And, and it, it's turned out to be very fountain pen friendly. <clears throat> very few of my fountain pens don't you know, bleed through it. Then this one was a little bit of a, I don't know, not a mistake or anything. It just, when I sewed it, it, it pretty much made hole in, in there. So I used some decorative, uh, I guess it was duct tape, kind of fancy tape. And it, it again has that uh, Office Depot laser paper in it. And again, I just sewed it. I, I want to learn how to do it the way that um, some of my friends do it, which, um, Again, I'm not going to mention names because I don't have permission to be saying who did what, but you'll know who you are. Um, uh, one friend sent me this little one that she did that's stitched, and it's beautiful. I mean, I haven't even finished decorating it yet. There's lots of more options, and <clears throat> but it's got some Tamoy River paper in it, some little coloring paper. And I was fascinated with how it's done this way with the thread. And so I went around looking for a paper piercer and I couldn't find one and then I realized I had an awl I, I could use but I wasn't I knew I'd have to watch more videos so that's just where we run out of time sometimes or we think well I want to learn that but <clears throat> but I'm just not quite ready yet you know to to learn that and this is just such a nice little pocket size and this is what another one that is uh uh done stitched that way too stitched in the uh 
and this person is a pen pal and also um <coughs> from Inco Rimo and and it's like um I think they call them uh, junk journals or you know all kinds of different this is braille isn't it beautiful oh I don't know whether I drew that or anyway I I find it very very beautiful and so making these little booklets just captivated my attention this week in fact I have got to write some letters so <laughs> I've got to but I got folders and you know I got old cards that were you know suitable this one will require a little bit of rounding corners of the paper and this was a reject I don't know it was a Halloween but it's gonna look really cute mod podged and uh, done as a booklet and then this one I thought was really cool I don't know how come I that I ended up with that card and it'll take a little creativity to kind of fix the back and you know work with it but that's what's fun really and an old Christmas card I thought would be really nice for that season you know the inserts that I put in can kind of be related like I could do Christmas lists and car Christmas card lists I like this one <laughs> this made me think of my mother-in-law she always had chihuahuas but it was in our card stuff and it was just not being chosen to be used so instead of throwing it into the recycling these will eventually become either gifts or in search for my own this was a Vera Bradley folder oops it's got crap written on the inside that'll be for me because it's got stuff written and this is one I mod podged I don't know if I, I haven't scored it yet so it won't fold well but it, it was some kind of like military uh, scrapbook paper anyway if, if you want to do that you will want to head on over to her website the one that I link because it is so simple and so fun <clears throat> and she gives several different ways you know with staples or with you know with the the sewing which I have not learned yet anyway <laughs> again I apologize to my pen pals because I've just been like inundated with ideas and it's been a lot of fun but I've got this desk cleared off today so I'm gonna sit down and catch up on my writing so um oh yeah I had one more thing to mention I missed a couple of comments on the channel and one asked about what I used for a mount and I do use an Archon mount on an old-fashioned tripod and I'm gonna link where I got my little it's called a Trixel uh, it grabs a hold of the uh, it, it grabs a hold of the camera and holds it really good so um, I'll link that and um, it's thank you again to very 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 generous pen friends and I, I hope to always be able to pay it forward and and I have been doing that so just wanted to say thank you and I'm not going to forget the crystal in fact I've got a couple of crystals sitting here I've got um, this is my rose uh, rose quartz in kind of raw form that I have on my desk and then this is my uh, one of my favorite amethysts that my grandfather gave me and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the emerald one today it's uh this is the one I wanted to feature so um, here we go this is the crystal Bible by Judy Hall and it is emerald Emerald is a stone of inspiration and infinite patience. It is life affirming stone, a life affirming stone with great integrity known as the stone of successful love. It brings domestic bliss and loyalty. It enhances unity, unconditional love and partnership and promotes friendship. Emerald keeps a partnership in balance. If it changes color, it is said to signal unfaithfulness. Oh, <laughs> isn't that something? Um, you probably have it sitting in a window or something that might do that. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, psychologically, Emerald gives strength of character to overcome the misfortunes of life. It's a stone of regeneration and recovery and can heal negative emotions. I really like that. Um, I got this when I took a class and it was I got to choose one. That was part of the class. And uh, I think we each got uh, a crystal or two crystals from the uh, moon, Moonrise crystals, too. So... Um, it's it's not the most beautiful crystal I have. It's not an um, it's not gem quality, but I really like it. So, oh, I can't tell. I I had something flash ahead, and it looked like it was going to delete. I hope not. <laughs> anyway, um, that is the crystal, and you can look it up online a little more if you want at uh, healingcrystals.com or Moonrise Crystals. She may have something on the emerald. Um, 
and uh, sorry about forgetting the crystal the other day. I got feedback on that, and I don't blame you. I, I miss it, too, and I, I just get really uh, <laughs> upset when I forget. So, that is the video for today. I have so many ideas of what to do. I wanted to do a notebook uh, video, but then I started to run into some, re you know, ideas about notebooks and how... And so I'm going to I'm going to be doing it, but it, it's taking on a different form. So thank you very much for viewing and I appreciate each and every one of you. We've gone over 400 viewers, uh, subscribers, which is just fun. It's, it's just really cool. And I thank you. <coughs> so I'll see you next time and uh, bye for now. I'm not going to be too happy if it doesn't.